So I can't speak a word of French, yet Paris was still amazing. So this was my first trip to Paris and I'm going to go through all the touristy stuff that you want to know about, all the sites, what I thought of them. Also, I'm going to go through some of the restaurants that you probably want to go to, that I went to, what I ate, what was nice. Let's talk about before you go, preparing to go, because that's really important. As a traveler who that travels a lot, a lot of my prep is, is really important in order for me to have a good experience when I get to the destination. And because I personally live in Canada, I spend a lot of time in the US as well. You know, it's very North American for me. My clothes match the North American style. The electrical outlets that I use, the chargers that I use, all that is North American. I'm going from North America to Europe, you know, the currency, all that's different. So let's just talk about that briefly before we get to, you know, what you want to do when you get there. So first of all, clothing. I, I think it's important for us to be able to blend into the environment and when we go there, wear clothing that's appropriate to the environment. I was there in June, Fashion Week in June, amazing time to be there. It was extremely hot. So if you have any linens, uh, like a linen shirt, I saw a lot of people wearing that. A lot of long sleeve shirts actually uh, as well, which surprised me. I tend to wear something like this, which is a short sleeve shirt. Uh, this is a super thin wool material. I like wool a lot because not only is it very comfortable, but if it gets wet, it doesn't, I still won't be cold. So that's nice. It doesn't stink like a synthetic does. That's nice. You know, and it's, it's casual yet a little dressy. What you'll find in, in Paris, and Europe in general, right, is you don't have a lot of branded clothes. If you have the big Nike t-shirt, people go, yep, you're from North America, you're a tourist, and you know, you might get higher pricing or something like that, right? So I think if possible, we want to try to avoid the tourist label. You know, they'll probably tell pretty quickly anyway. However, I, I like to blend in a little bit. You know, I'm wearing long pants usually. It's a little more formal. Some people are wearing shorts. That's totally acceptable. Depending on where you're going, if you're going to a more fancy restaurant, for example, you, you may not be allowed in with shorts on. Also, full shoes. So I'm wearing typically dress shoes. There's a lot of walking in Paris. So sometimes I'll have some really nice looking runners as well um, with me or loafers or something like that, a little more relaxed. So so, so clothing, that's that's kind of uh, the, the big thing that I found, right? So being able to pack your suitcase appropriately with the right clothes. So that's important. Electronics. So whenever I travel, for all of us nowadays, electronics is a big deal. So having the right adapter uh, with you at all times is really going to be important, especially in your hotel room. You're going to want to plug things in to charge your phone, maybe your laptop, maybe your camera, you know, all those things. So for that, for the for charging all those things, this, or something that looks very much like this, is really important. This is a what they call a universal charger. So what it is really is a nice compact device that allows me to travel anywhere in the world and plug my laptop or more USB cable into this and then plug it into the wall wherever I am. So a great device. Uh, on Amazon, I'll put the link below. Um, you can pick one of these up, pretty cost effective. I can't remember the exact price, but you need one anyway. So buy one. If you're traveling with a group, you probably wanna have two. I would get one with plenty of USB ports on it um, because that's primarily what you're using. If, you, if you've got your laptop, you can plug it in there as well. Uh, you're gonna be probably on trains and in the hotel room and stuff like that where you're gonna need power. So this device is critical. Okay. so. Now let's talk about your first step on the journey. You're on the plane. What do you want on the plane? So for me, I like to travel with a backpack and then my normal suitcase. And for me, if I can, I will not check it in. I will instead carry it on the flight with me and put it in the overhead. Just because I don't want to lose my luggage. I've had it lost before. And um, if I can travel light, I will. So I have those two things with me. Uh, what I'm bringing on the plane with me that I, can, I want to readily have available is a jacket. So a very light jacket. And what I use that for is when I'm trying to sleep on the plane, I will actually put it over my body so the air that's coming from overhead doesn't wake me up and doesn't cool me down too much. So I put that over me, uh, droop it over my shoulders, and then put it over my body like that. And uh, that works really well to keep you nice and uh, not too warm, but quite comfortable on the plane. It, it prevents the draft. So that's a big thing. So I have that available. Usually in my backpack, I pull it out, put it over it, go to sleep. 
Uh, also have a water bottle. So they give you a little bit of water on the plane, but it's in these little tiny plastic cups. And once you drink it, it's gone. You may not see water again for another half an hour or hour or whatever it is. So if you've got your water bottle, you can have a sip of water at any point. It's quite nice. The other thing for me is because for any sort of long flight like this, I want to go to sleep. It's usually a red eye or something like that. So I get my best time for my holiday uh, if I can sleep on the plane. That way I get off the plane, you know, I'm not completely destroyed and I can then go do things. So what I want to do is I have these little plug-in earplugs that you just squish and then stick in and then they expand. They're, they're very cheap. Uh, again, I'll put a link below. Disposable, they're one-time use, so those are good. And then I have my noise-canceling headphones that I put over my ears and that prevents a lot of the noise and allows you to sleep actually pretty good. I also have all my, my uh, charging cables in a little pack because I want to charge my phone or something like that. I want those readily available. And then of course snacks. So you want to have some snacks available for the flight, something that you can quickly pull out and eat, whether that be power bars or dried fruit or whatever you prefer, but just have that readily available. And the last thing that I really like to have on the flight are sanitary wipes. So you know, like wet wipes or something like that. You can buy the little package in the airport. Again, I'll put a link to those below. Uh, I always want to have that in my in my backpack so that I if I get something on my hands or there's something yucky on the the seat tray I can wipe that down. Planes are super dirty, so those are the things that you want to have uh, readily available, probably in your backpack and whatever else you may need to access while you're in the flight. If you're watching movies on Netflix that you've downloaded on your phone or your tablet, you probably want that available as well. For me, sleeping is the first priority. Okay, so you've done your prep work, you're all prepared, you've got the right clothes, you're, you're all packed, you've done the plane experience, you've had a good sleep or watched some good movies, you're now in Paris, you're ready to go. You arrive at Charles de Gaulle Airport, it's a big airport, uh, very busy. What you want to do now is get transportation from the airport to the city center. That's probably where you're staying, somewhere in the city center. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. You can take a, a train, you can take a Uber. I took the mass transit, which was pretty straightforward. Uh, a lot of it's in French, which was a little bit tricky. Uh, and buying tickets was a little bit tricky as well. So you quite often have to ask people for some assistance there. Uh, it's an interesting machine there um, with the transit. Uh, it's got kind of like a roller thing on it. So you kind of got to roll through um, the different things, uh, menu selection. So that was a bit different. Uh, on the way back to the airport, I got an Uber just because the uh, one of the train stations were, was out of service. And so to get my connection, uh, I got all messed up. So, and I was running short on time. So you have to do that. That's the only time I really spent, you know, a bit of money on transportation. Getting to downtown was actually pretty straightforward. That was pretty easy. Just getting back, I ran into some difficulties, so, so watch out for that. They do have Uber, and uh, it works pretty well there. So now that you're in downtown Paris, there's a few things that you need to know about right away. Um, one of them is using public washrooms. Now, this is a thing that can get you into trouble if you don't know what to do. So I think it's really important to talk about. Public washrooms in Europe, in general, are not the same as in North America. You'll often have a, a stall on the street that you can only get into if you put money into it. It's like a vending machine. If you don't have change, of course, you can't get the door open. So my recommendation is always make sure that you have some euros change in your pocket for the public washrooms. If you can't see the public washrooms on the street, and sometimes they don't really jump out at you, they don't have a lot of signage quite often, you know, you can go into McDonald's. And I found that McDonald's were really good. They usually had fairly clean bathrooms. Again, it quite often will cost you money to use those washrooms. So just make sure that you've got the change available in your pocket to go do that. Accommodations. For me, I stayed at a, a few different hotels. I was there for a week and I think I stayed at four different hotels. There's some very nice hotels there. They are a little bit expensive, so book early. When I went in June, of course, it's very busy. It was both the air show there, plus it was fashion week. So every hotel was sold out. If you have points with a particular hotel chain, this is an excellent time to utilize those points because the cost per night of a hotel room will be extremely high. Another option is Airbnbs in Paris. Um, there's a lot of them, which is pretty good. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is they're gonna be extremely small in general. So um, I was looking for accommodation just for myself. I like to get the entire apartment. 
My entire apartment uh, accommodations with Airbnbs were really small. Basically the size of this room, which is my office storeroom type thing. And um, so you've got a bathroom, a kitchen, a bedroom, uh, all in one, right? So uh, that was one of the places I stayed. So super small. So just be ready for that. Transportation. This was one of the most interesting things in Paris for me was the uh, the vast array of transportation options. You have bus, you have uh, inner city train, which is really good. It's like a subway, works very well. Uh, the tickets for that I found were a little bit hit and miss, to be honest. I think it's a great system. What I found as a tourist was I would go to certain stations and there would be no ticket machines. Uh, I can't understand the logic around that. So I'd have to either walk to another ticketing system or another train station. That was my only option, I guess. But I, of course I wouldn't do that because it was a, quite a walk. So um, the first few days I walked a lot around Paris, uh, which was great because I got to see a lot. But then because I kept running into train stations with no ticketing booth, I saw people on scooters. So there's these little electric scooters and you can download the app on your phone. And then when you see a scooter, you just scan it with your phone and it'll fire up and allow you to take it. And they, they go a maximum of 20 kilometers per hour. So not very fast. If you crash, of course, at 20 kilometers per hour, it is gonna hurt and you can break bones and stuff still. But overall, uh, I was surprised at how safe it felt. Uh, I was driving through downtown Paris, city center, on this electric scooter, and I'm usually pretty risk averse because I'm in a different country. You know, I don't want to be in the hospital for my holiday. But I found it was a fantastic way to navigate the streets of Paris and to get to where I wanted to go very quickly. You just, you know, once you arrive, you park it, walk away. And that's really convenient. So I would highly recommend you take a look at those. If you don't feel totally safe with them, that's understandable because I have seen people wipe out with them and you will get some damage if you do wipe out on one of those. All right, so let me touch quickly on culture and then we're gonna to start to get into the tourist sites a little bit, okay? So I don't speak any French. Uh, however, whenever I went somewhere, it was great because they had usually English menus. They would speak English to me. So I never really felt uncomfortable at all. I never did not understand things. If you go to some other cities like Vienna, fantastic city, love Vienna, but you won't see all the time the English, right? So it'll be German uh, and German quite often, right? So it'll be a little bit less multilingual. But I found in Paris, there was never that issue at all. So I, I don't know if I would really call it an issue actually. It's just that if you're a tourist and you're expecting some English, it's gonna be there. So, and if you don't see it right away, you just ask for the English menu and they'll bring you one. And so that's not a problem at all. The other big thing at a cultural level is dining. The biggest thing for me is if you're expecting your bill and you're in a rush to go somewhere else, don't expect the waiter or waitress to just bring your bill as soon as they think you're done eating. You will have to put your hand up and say, by the way, could I please get my bill? Uh, but not a big deal, right? Uh, the other thing, that, as far as culture in Paris, very multicultural. So you're gonna have uh, lots of different types of food from all over the place, lots of people from all over the place, uh, which is really interesting and very cool. I met some of the most interesting people during my time there. So I think it's, uh, it's very, very cool that way. Uh, as far as interacting with others, I found Paris to be extremely friendly. For a guy who speaks no French, you know, complete tourist, people were uh, probably the kindest and most friendly to me out of any city. And that means a lot because I've been to a lot of great cities. An example of that would be at a restaurant by myself, both tables on each side of me uh, strike up conversations with me and are asking me where I'm from, how I'm doing, giving me tips on where to go, telling me what's good to eat on the menu. Waiter comes over, asks me what kind of wine I want to drink. I, I say, I'd like to drink this wine. He says, no, no, I can get you a much better wine for the same price. Brings me a glass of wine to taste to, just to make sure I like it. And then twice at restaurants like that, they would just bring me the remainder of the bottle for free and uh, just say, here you go. You know, just amazing little things like that, that as a tourist made me think, wow, it's just um, really special, right? So customer service I found overall fantastic. I know there's stories of it not being, but for me, amazing. So thank you, Paris. Thank you all the people that work in the service industry there. Amazing job, thank you very much. Okay, let's talk tourist stuff, okay? Let's talk sites you wanna go to, because I know you have, a, you have a long list of places you wanna go to, and that's great, because we gotta go check those places out, because they are really cool. But let's do some pro tips first. Now, this is gonna save you a lot of suffering when you get there. First of all, 
book your tickets online before you go. And you, sh you should even start to look at that months before you go. Eiffel Tower, book those tickets now, right? If you know when you're gonna be there, book them now. If you wanna go to the very top, book them to go to the very top. So if the tickets are already sold out for the Eiffel Tower or whatever you wanna go to, don't worry. It just means you're gonna have to stand in line a little bit longer probably, right? And um, you can still go. It doesn't mean that nobody else can go that day. It just means that the tickets are sold out. So I had that with the Eiffel Tower. I waited in line in the hot sun for over an hour, which was painful, yes. But some people will spend much longer in the hot sun, maybe half the day or something like that, depending on how big the lineup is. If you don't get tickets, just go early. You know, beat the rush and you should be fine. So that's what I would recommend there. Just be prepared to wait. So bring things that you're gonna need if you're waiting in the hot sun uh, in the summertime for me, right? So that, in my case, that was sunglasses, a hat, uh, and then also maybe some water. So you might need a little backpack with water and maybe some snacks and stuff like that. To start off with the different sites, let's talk about the Eiffel Tower. Of course, you have to go there. One of the best views, I would say not the best view in Paris, but pretty good, right? You're gonna have some pretty fantastic views. There's a lot of history around the Eiffel Tower, which you should read about before you go. For me, it was afterwards because it was so amazing. I had to learn a little bit more about it. But if you read about it before you go, you're gonna go up into it and have a different experience because you're gonna see the little things like his office at the very top and stuff like that, which is gonna be a little more special to you, I think, when you go there. I think my all-time favorite, well, no, that's not true. The Louvre is my favorite uh, just because, right? How can you beat the Louvre? And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But the Arc de Triomphe uh, is really, I think, well worth visiting. That's probably my number two top choice there for Paris. I think the view on the Arc is the best. I think it's better than the Eiffel Tower, um, just my personal preference, because of what you're looking at. Uh, and it's well worth the visit, just because of the, uh, the history of it and everything else like that. You don't have to buy your tickets for that beforehand. You could just go to the site. You have to go under the road. There's a, uh, a great big roundabout that goes around the arc, but you can just go, uh, there's a tunnel under the road that you take, and that's why where you buy your tickets is right there. And then you come up underneath the arc. You, can, you come up and you can walk around. There's a memorial site there. When I was there, there was a band playing and it was just fantastic. And then you can also then go up into the, the arc and get on the roof of it there or the, or the very top. And that's where you're gonna have that, that amazing view. So uh, a very nice site. There's a little gift store inside and things like that if you're into that. But um, that's highly recommended. Now let's get to the Louvre. Now this is huge, okay? So you wanna have a bit of a plan here, right? Because it's so massive. I was in Paris for a week and I could have spent the whole week at the Louvre, right? Because it's so big, it's so wonderful, it's just, it's amazing. So the first thing about the Louvre is get your tickets online. Buy those tickets, have them ready. When you go to the Louvre, you're gonna be standing in, in a line for some period of time. You wanna reduce that time by as much as possible. Step one, buy your ticket online. Step two, know how to get into the Louvre. Now, here is the pro tip for getting into the Louvre. There is a secret door that most people don't know about. Most people will stand in the line where you see the big glass pyramid sticking out of the ground. There's a line up right there. Don't go in that. Instead, go to the side a little bit and there's a, this uh, entranceway where you can go down into the mall. So that's what you want to look for is the mall entrance. That will get you down to the second level, below street level, and that's where you get the second lineup, which actually gets you into the Louvre. So that will save you a considerable amount of time, especially if it's very busy. When you go to the Louvre, I recommend go early. So you want to get to the Louvre by around 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., to avoid most of the crowds and the big rush that is always there. Uh, those big lineups, they can get really big, so you want to do that. And once you get down into the Louvre, there are several entranceways into the different sections of the Louvre. So if you can print off a map uh, from their website and have an idea of where do I want to go within the Louvre, that's going to help you out tremendously. The Louvre is a very big place. There are some areas that are busier than others. So for example, if you want to see the Mona Lisa, which everybody wants to go see, keep in mind that that's gonna be the busiest place in the Louvre 
So if you want to go there, I would suggest go there first thing in the morning, go take a look, you know, be done with it so then you can go and enjoy the less, you know, uh, busier places of the Louvre and just relax. Because that will be really frantic. When I was there, uh, it's a not a big room and it was packed with people so I could barely get anywhere near the actual painting and uh, it was just chaos. So that was my least favorable moment in the Louvre just because it was so busy there. Uh, it's a separate room just for that painting uh, whereas the other paintings are all on the walls in the common rooms so it's a much easier experience for, for all the others. Um, one of the methods that I took for the Louvre was I went from the earliest to the latest and I just worked my way through time and I found that that was quite rewarding. Uh, I spent about four hours in the Louvre so I moved fairly quickly. I think that if you want to stop and spend more time in particular areas you could easily spend all day at the Louvre. Uh, you probably want to have a break for something to eat at some point but it's just such an amazing facility. One of my favorite places to look in the Louvre was really the mummy area where they actually have real mummies. Uh, the whole Egyptian area was pretty fantastic. It's all amazing depending on what you're into but I would say that that for me was one of the, the best spots. So, so some of the other really cool areas of the Louvre for me was the Roman area. So there's sculptures done there, which is really nice. I really like the space as well within that area. We had natural sunlight coming in and it was just a very warm and very, very cool area. The other area that you should really take a look at is at the very bottom when they were um, making the Louvre. They found, and this is quite controversial uh, in the French culture, the amount of money they spent on it and what they discovered when they were actually uh, ex excavating that area. They found the walls, I guess, of the original kind of fort or Paris border there. But you can actually go down in the, in the lowest level and actually see those original walls because they pulled all the dirt away and uh, you can actually see it, which is really cool to actually see. So you're in a museum with all this fantastic stuff and then you can go down below and see you know, the original wall. So the next big site for me was the Catacombs of Paris. This was quite amazing. Buy your ticket online beforehand because the lineup for this is outside on the sidewalk, super hot area. Uh, and I saw a lot of people not having a good time in that lineup. With my ticket, I rolled up in five minutes. I'm inside air conditioning, the way to go, right? So that alone made me uh, realize the importance of buying tickets online. For me, this was quite interesting. You have to remember that every skull you see is from a person and you're gonna see a ton of them. It's basically one big bucket of a graveyard where all these bones got thrown in. And the history on this is, is you know, I'm not a big history buff, but for me, listening to the audio tape, because you do get a, a little machine that talks to you and tells you the history of each room. For me, I was really amazed by that. And there's, there's a few museums I've been to in different cities around the world that have really remained with me. And this is definitely one of them. You know, just going through and realizing how many people are buried down there is, is pretty mind boggling, I found. And then near the end of the tour, you learn certain things, like there was a concert down there at one point as well. And trying to imagine that to me is pretty, pretty amazing. So there's something to think about there. Well worth going to. So I would make sure you go to that if you're in Paris, if you're a tourist like me from North America, I think you, you will enjoy that. The next site to go to, of course, the Pantheon. I never got to go inside the Pantheon because it was closed the day I went there. So I was a little bummed out about that, but it gives me a reason to go back to Paris, right? I did, however, spend a lot of time around Pantheon, and what I found was that was really cool. The tables around the Pantheon, great place for having lunch or just relaxing with a coffee or meeting with somebody and having a conversation. I'm just a, such a nice area with these tables and just really well laid out. So even though I didn't get inside the Pantheon, oh, this was such an amazing little walk around it. Um, so well, well worth it. So when we're talking about museums, which there are a lot of in Paris, I think the one that really stands out to me it's interesting because everybody goes to the Louvre, and the Louvre is fantastic, but, and I'm gonna probably pronounce this incorrectly, but the Musée d'Orsay uh, Museum, to me, was pretty amazing. And we, we often think about the Louvre as the destination, the museum in Paris, and, and obviously it is, but I think that this often gets overlooked. And if you're looking at paintings, this is the place to go. I was very impressed with it. 
This museum hosts major 19th and 20th century European art collections, but the, what was special to me was it's housed in this monumental former railway station. And when, so when you go in, it's just this very unique architecture, this very unique space. And if you're into that sort of thing, which, which I am, you know, you stand in a space and you can kind of feel the, the energy or the history behind it, um, definitely you want to go to this. Not only will you see the most amazing paintings by some of the world's most famous artists, but just being in that space I, I found was quite magical. So um, you can get through this in a couple hours, uh, but well worth going to. They have a great gift shop as well where I actually bought a couple books, which I don't normally do, so that kind of gives you an idea of how good it was. So one of the other sites I really enjoyed going to, and it's a little bit out of town a bit, um, you have to take the train for this, or the uh, subway, was the, and I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, I'm sure, so bear with me, the Sacre Cur Basilica. And um, it's, it's well worth going to, very cool site. You know, it's up on the hill a little bit, so you can definitely get a little bit of a view of Paris. So it's, it's worth going to. Uh, you go through the, into the church, but also the courtyard area, very nice, it's very busy, so th that was a good spot. St. Chapelle, I think that's another good one that I would recommend going to. A very cool spot as well. So this one is gonna give you a lot of really amazing painted glass windows, something like I've never seen before. Just every angle is just amazingly well done, really huge, does get busy, so the lineup for this was about a half an hour, it went pretty quick. I didn't have tickets for this, so I did stand in line, but it was well worth it, so I'd recommend that. Something around the same nature as that, another site, and see if I can pronounce this one, is Aglise Saint Sulpice. Um, another fantastic site to go to, Roman Catholic Church to take a look at. A lot of fantastic churches there. Most of them are well worth the visit, and if you do go to these churches, if you can go either up to the roof, which sometimes will cost you a little bit of money, but I think it's well worth the you know five to 10 euros you're gonna pay. And sometimes they also have a crypt that you can go to as well. And that's also usually will cost you a few euros, but well worth going to. And there's usually a bit of a history behind it. And quite often they will tell you the history as you go through it on a bit of a tour. The other site that I think is very popular that I never went to, although I walked by a million times, was the Army Museum and a very nice spot, very central Paris. So I would definitely take a look at that. I can't really give you much on that because I never went inside, but uh, next time I go back, that's what I'm gonna go take a look at. So I was in Paris in June and I didn't know when I went, but it was actually a very special week in Paris and it's actually called Music Day and I'm not gonna uh, say the French name because I, I would of course butcher that, but it was on June 21st uh, in 2019 and I think it's always around the same time every year. But if you want to go to Paris and experience something really special, I, I would recommend this. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect. They said, oh, there would be music playing everywhere. And yes, there was. Uh, everywhere you'd go, every street corner, every store would be playing different types of music. Live street performers were out there uh, on every corner. In the Latin district, it was a really amazing, very lively. Uh, if you want to go have dinner, you definitely had some performances going on. Everything from classical music to rock. In one area, you could see on the river, there's this huge mosh pit, uh, you know, some really heavy music. Teenagers having a really good time, just packed. People dancing on the streets. In one of the other areas where there's more restaurants, I remember walking up to the street corner and lots of traffic and the cars stopped and people got out of their cars and started dancing. And then when the light goes green, they'd get back in their cars and drive away. Nobody was getting upset. There was no violence. There was nothing like that. You know, there were some beer bottles on the streets and some litter and stuff like that, which was immediately cleaned up the next day. But people just had a fantastic time. Music everywhere. So just a real party vibe. Very happy and enthusiastic and just amazing. Actually, it was just a fantastic day and evening. And just, yeah, if you want to experience something really special, I highly recommend that. Okay, so let's talk shopping. Those are the sites. Those are some of the tourist sites I recommend you go into. Before we get off of tourist sites, one last one. And it's not on the on any of the guidebooks or anything like that, but really what I'd recommend is spend some time on the river. Buy a baguette, maybe buy some cheese, maybe buy a, a bottle of wine. 
So the first place is Bronte Bay, and Bronte Bay is a very special place, not very well known, but they do handmade leather purses. And so if you're buying something, say for your wife, or you want to buy a nice purse that's not, you know, like a brand name or, you know, something like that, but is really nice, uh, go take a look at this place, and I'll put it in the list below. All of these places I'm talking about will be below in the comments there in the description, so you can find the links to their websites and stuff like that in the description of them. But I went there, I bought a lot of different gifts there uh, for my wife, for my mom, for different people. They sell everything from the little change purses that made out of beautiful leather, uh, so many different designs, uh, all the way up to full-size purses. And so I think if you're into that sort of thing, you probably want to go visit them. They make some, some fantastic stuff. And also the service that I got there was amazing. So I walked in, I'm a guy, I don't know anything about purses. The lady says, hey, can I help you? And what are you looking for? And just pulled out a bunch of stuff for me and immediately helped me with whatever everything I needed. I came out of there with everything I wanted. So. Thank you very much if you're, you know, if you're the owner of that shop and you're watching this, great job, fantastic product, fantastic customer service. The next place I would recommend if you're into shoes, um, Calancourt, uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, Calancourt, I think it is, it's gonna be in the links below. Um, they make shoes and not only do they make shoes but they are really good at making top quality shoes. So this is really a place it's made to fit, you know, custom shoes they do. And they also have off-the-shelf shoes as well. So that's what I bought. I'm going to show you the ones I bought. So these are uh, just a summertime shoe that I bought. Uh, super nice quality. Uh, you know that you can try a bunch of different shoes on there. Make sure it fits you uh, nicely. But as you can see, it's got this suede material and um, just a really nice fit. Very light summer shoe. But they have a ton of different shoes there. So if you're not into these, don't worry. Um, they've got everything from sneakers to full-on, you know, leather dress shoes. But the quality of the materials and the craftsmanship of how these are made, that's what you're paying for, right? So, um, you know, everything is top quality on these. This is a name that's world-renowned. They're very well-known in the uh, dress shoe community when you're looking at top quality shoes. So if you're in Paris, they've got two stores, I believe. Um, and the service, again, was really good. I spent probably two to three hours there right after their big music night, so everybody was hungover and uh, they were still super helpful and I feel like I got a great shoe that I'm going to use for years. So check those guys out if you're into shoes for sure. Another very popular store of course in Paris is Supreme. Not really my thing, it's kind of like skater style clothing uh, that, that people collect and really like. Uh, I went into the store, cool store. Uh, just not my thing, so I didn't buy anything, uh, but they do have a good selection. It is a really well-known store in Paris. It's actually in a very cool area of Paris, so for, for nothing else, maybe go check it out and look at that area. Lots of other stores around that area that you might find something pretty cool in. Now, if you want to go to just a, a big store, department store type thing and find lots of different stuff, BHV Marias Home. Home, home, H-O-M-M-E, don't know how to say that, home maybe. Take a look at that. Uh, that was one of the best sites, I thought, for just overall shopping. They had tons of stuff, like it's a big department store, but they got lots of really cool stuff too, I thought, so that was, that was quite nice. So one of the other places I went to in Paris was a place that makes custom perfumes. Perfumes in Paris is, um, it's, a, it's one of the many things they do really well there. So there's a place called La Artisan that does these perfumes and it's a wide variety of different perfumes that you can select. Bought some for my wife when I was there, she liked it. So there's a ton of different perfumes going on there. All the way from this to like, you know, the, the, uh, the well-known brands to everything else. So a lot of variety there to take a look at. But if you're in Paris, I think picking up some perfume or some cologne probably is not a bad idea. They've got some really good brands there. The other big store that I would recommend you take a look at if you're into name brands, high quality, expensive, uh, take a look at Goyard. They have, and I probably didn't pronounce that well either. I'm sorry, my French, I have no French, so. But Maison Goyard is a very high-end leather store. They've got two stores in Paris, and they're both right across the street from each other. Uh, one of them is more accessories, smaller stuff, and the other one is more kind of like luggage and bigger items. 
Both will have a lineup. They only allow so many people in the store at the same time. You'll notice the salespeople have plastic gloves on. It's all very posh, uh, very fancy. When I was there, I bought a wallet. It set me back a few dollars for sure. Kind of gives me memories of Paris every time I pull it out and pay for something. All right, so now we're done shopping. We're done sites. Now let's get into what to eat. And in Paris, there's a lot to eat. You know, there's many places to go. I had a long list of places I wanted to go to. I only got to half of them. You know, I'll put all of my complete list of places I wanted to go down below, but it's hard to go wrong in Paris, really. I would recommend that you try to go away from the steak and fries, the classic tourist meal, and go into more some of the exotics, like have snails, have escargot, try it out. It's fantastic, right? Eat some fagua, right? Have some of that delicious with some wine and bread. Whew, I'm hungry just thinking about it. You know, try some of that delicious. Eat some duck, right? There's restaurants there that all they serve is duck. They just specialize in duck. Have some of that. Man, it's just so delicious. Um, you know, it, but it's hard to eat something that's not good in Paris. The breads, they specialize in breads. To, to you know, Parisians, I think bread is, uh, you know, it's almost like air. It's just they do such a good job of bread, and uh, and it's just delicious. So cheese, bread, snails, eat, eat it all, eat it all. Just you know, have fun because it's you're you're gonna love it. Some of the restaurants that I enjoyed, the full list is down below. But Pink Mama was a place that I never got to, but everybody talks about how nice it is. So that's probably a place to take a look at. Um, next time I'm there, I'll definitely check it out. So if you like ice cream, there's a place called Berthillon. Uh, the link is below. Great selection of ice cream. It's world renowned. So that's the end of the Paris video. Hopefully you found that helpful and interesting. And hopefully that makes your experience in Paris that much better. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, please like, please comment if you would like me to add anything into future videos, do a particular city that you're traveling to, or just comments in general. If I mispronounce any of these things, which I know I actually did because um, my French again is terrible, uh, please let me know uh, how to pronounce it. That'll help me as well in the future. So thank you very much and safe travels.